Hello, I'm Julie Kavarian, and I'm excited to present this breakout session where I'll introduce how to create and edit dynamic blocks in BricsCAD v26. Before we begin, though, I'd like to note that this functionality is currently not available to our customers in the United States. However, it is available for the rest of the world. In this session, you'll learn about the history of dynamic block behavior in BricsCAD. Then we'll jump into the first demo to see how to apply a stretch action, visibility states, and a block table to a new dynamic block. And we'll see it round trip into AutoCAD. Then we'll see what is and is not supported in V26 to create and edit D blocks. Next up is why we're using experimental mode for these new capabilities. And in the second demo, we'll edit an existing dynamic block directly within V26. Last but not least, I'll show you how to file a support request when you have questions about dynamic blocks in BricsCAD. Before V26, although you could manipulate instances of existing dynamic blocks, you could not edit their definitions nor create new blocks within BricsCAD. For example, you could change a block's visibility state or perform actions like stretch, rotate, or flip, but only if those actions were originally defined in AutoCAD. With V26, the rest of the world can create and edit dynamic blocks in BricsCAD while in experimental mode. All right, let's dive into the first demo. As a quick reminder of dynamic block behavior in V25, we can see on this dynamic block, we can stretch the height and width of this window. However, the existing dynamic block definition cannot be edited, meaning you couldn't add anything extra like a flip. When the edit is used on the dynamic block, BricsCAD reminds us that it cannot be edited and asks if we want to convert it to a parametric block. Now we're in V26. There are several ways to control the availability of experimental mode. One is from the start page. This changes the value of the experimental mode system variable. And it can also be set from the settings dialog or by typing experimental mode right at the command line. It's your choice. Just know that a restart of BricsCAD is required for this change to take effect. In 26.1, you'll notice that blocks are now classified as one of three types, static or traditional blocks, parametric, which are 2D or 3D blocks that can change shape, size, and appearance, or dynamic blocks. And these are similar to parametric blocks, but can only be 2D. Now this dynamic block contains a stretch action and a fixed width of 250. The new search bar in the Drawing Explorer makes it easier to find a particular block. Start typing and BricsCAD finds that letter combination anywhere within the block name. BricsCAD understands the type of block and provides edit modes based on that. From within block edit, Parametric blocks are edited with parametric mode. Static blocks can be e edited in either parametric or dynamic mode, and dynamic blocks are edited in dynamic mode. Here is the dynamic block from the keynote session. It has two visibility states for the width, a stretch parameter for the height of the top plate, Let's recreate this dynamic block in BritzCAD v26.1. We'll start with the standard static block of the base. Now we can choose to edit in either parametric or dynamic mode. So of course, we're going to choose dynamic mode. Notice now that we are in the D block editor. Commands that are not functional during D block editor mode are now grayed out in the ribbon. This makes it perfectly clear which commands are available during the editing session. There's no guessing on which tools are usable. 
Now, the base block for the scaffolding requires two visibility states to represent two widths, 250 and 350. This block, as drawn, contains all the geometry for both of those widths. First, let's add the visibility parameter for the block widths. Select where to place the visibility marker in the drawing. Properties of these definition parameters can be edited via the Properties panel. This makes it easy to change the label name to something more descriptive, like block width. Next, we can open the Visibility States dialog box to rename the default visibility state to 350. Again, something that is more descriptive. Then we can add the second state with the name of 250. With these visibility states defined, we can select which entities should be visible or invisible for each of those states. Here, it's easiest to select the entities to be invisible in the 350 state. And now define the entities for the 250 visibility state, but first change the current state to 250 and then select the geometry to be invisible. This is a good time to test the block. Test block opens the block drawing in another window and allows you to test the dynamic block behavior from the grip To end testing, simply close the test block drawing window. The visibility states are complete. Next, let's add the stretch parameter for the top plane of the block. In general, first add a parameter, then add the action. So the first step is to add the linear parameter to where we want to stretch the geometry. In the property panel, change the name from distance one to height. Next, add the stretch action by first picking the height parameter, then the top point of the parameter. This is where the stretch action will start. Define the window around the geometry to be stretched and place the location of the stretch action in the drawing, and that's it. Again, with test block, we can stretch the top plate by dragging the top arrow of the grip. Save and close this editing session, and now the width can also be changed, we can see from the properties panel as well, and the height of the plate can be stretched with the grip. Now this works, but it might be better to restrict the size of that top plate. One method is to add a block table. Block tables work to limit the combination of parameters through a table. Add the existing width and height parameters to the table and add two height values for both 350 and 250 block widths. Notice the widths are available from the dropdown because those were defined in the visibility states. And then we'll add values of 35 and 25 for each of those widths. And again, let's test the block by selecting the visibility state and the value. We can change the height of the top plate for the 350 block width for both values, but notice the block table icon disappears when the visibility state changes to 250. Why? Because the block table is only visible with that 350 width. How do we fix this? It's simple. We just need to change the visibility of the block table so that it is visible in all states. And here's the block table to control both the block width and the height of the top plate. What happens to our dynamic blocks when opened in AutoCAD? Well, of course, you'll see the AutoCAD foreign drawing message, but you know to continue opening the drawings. And here is our block with the same block table, stretch, and visibility states.
This means that dynamic blocks created and edited in BricsCAD round trip with AutoCAD. Okay, so we just saw a new dynamic block created in BricsCAD V26. Let's look at the details of what is and is not supported in BricsCAD. You can create specific types of dynamic blocks and edit specific actions of those dynamic blocks. What do I mean by that? Well, let's start with visibility states, which allow you to control which entities within a dynamic block are visible at any given time. Essentially, you can switch different entities within that block on or off, depending or linked to that visibility state. For example, you can have one block that shows different types of automobiles, a sports car, a van, or a truck. And visibility states can also be used to show different views, say the top or the side or the back view of that vehicle. Next, we have action parameters. And these are used to change multiple entities at, all at once. So you'll first define the parameters and then define the actions. Parameters are these things like points, linear, visibility. Those can be adjusted via the properties panel. So it's easy to fine tune them after creation. And our actions, those things that move, stretch, or flip, they control how the block responds to changes. Now, action properties cannot be edited via the properties panel after creation. So you'll need to set those properties during the initial setup process. Now let's talk about block tables. They make managing parameters easier. So instead of handling a lot of different combinations of values, you can set specific options like the length, width, the rotation, or here we've got visibility states and heights to predefined settings. This simplifies your blocks and makes designs less complicated. And during the dynamic block creation process, you'll want to test it. So we have a test block feature that lets you do just that. You can test your block directly in the dynamic block editor. This helps to ensure that everything is correct before you finish the block. Dynamic blocks made or edited in BricsCAD do round trip with AutoCAD so you can easily use your blocks on both platforms without losing any features, which makes it easy to collaborate on projects. While BricsCAD V26 introduces exciting new capabilities for dynamic blocks, there are a few limitations. First, constraint parameters. They control block behavior by defining relationships or sizes dynamically. If you have existing blocks with constraint parameters, you can manipulate them as in V25, but we don't support editing them in BricsCAD yet. And AutoCAD lookup tables. They make it easier to choose options. It's a list of preset choices. Instead of typing in values yourself, you can just pick the values from the table. Again, those blocks with lookup tables created in AutoCAD are not yet fully supported. You can see and use them in BricsCAD just like before, and you can pick the options from the table, but you won't be able to change or edit the lookup tables in BricsCAD. And finally, it's important to repeat that it's not possible to edit or create dynamic blocks in BricsCAD in the United States. Why experimental mode? Well, there are a couple of reasons. These features are not 100% complete, but do understand that they are fully tested. And by introducing them in experimental mode, we're giving you early access to see what we've accomplished so far. It's also a chance for you to tell us if the current functionality meets your needs, what additional features would improve your workflow. And your feedback is invaluable as we continue to refine and expand these capabilities. Rest assured, we fully intend to support dynamic block creation and editing as a complete feature in the future. Now let's get back to the demo. Now let's look at how to edit an existing dynamic block. Here's a window. The height and width of the window can be stretched. Notice the tick marks on the screen. These represent the list of sizes for the height and width. 
Let's edit the list by adding additional sizes, say 54 and 60 inches for the height. How do we do that? Simply add those values to the distance list in the value set area for the window height parameter. Each parameter must be separated by a semicolon. And here we see the window height now includes 54 and 60 inches. When you have questions about creating and editing dynamic blocks, please do submit a support request. There are several ways to do this. One of the easiest ways, I think, is directly from the start page. Over on the right, file a support request. Choose dynamic blocks for the category and be sure to enter a clear and descriptive title for the SR at that subject line. You'll need to fill out the other fields, so be sure to select the relevant type of request, probably a bug report or a technical issue, choose the severity, then your computer operating system, the BricsCAD language, as well as the BricsCAD version. In the description area, provide a detailed description of your workflow, including any specific commands or actions that might be causing the issue. So document the workflow steps of the expected behavior, the actual behavior or failure, and please do include your drawing. Now, do understand that your data is treated as confidential unless you include the phrase, okay to share in that SR. Now, videos can also be uploaded to show the issues that you're experiencing. And when that's all complete, click the Send Support Request button. All right, now for a short recap. We saw how dynamic blocks could be manipulated in BricsCAD before V26, and we created a new dynamic block with a stretch action, visibility states, and a block table and saw how that round trips easily into AutoCAD. Then we learned what is and is not supported in V26 for creating and editing dynamic blocks. Next up was why these features are in experimental mode. And we finished with editing an existing dynamic block. And last but not least, how to submit a support request for help with dynamic blocks. Now with this knowledge, you're ready to start using dynamic blocks in BricsCAD. Thanks so much for watching this breakout session. Be sure to check out the other breakout sessions for BricsCAD V26. And scan this QR code for even more information.